the No Dunks Podcast on the Athletic Network. It's Monday, October 16th, 2023. I'm J.E. Skeets here in the Classic Factory. And to my left, it's the bearded one, my top shot hot boy, Trey Kirby. Hey-o! hey And over yonder, making the magic happen, super producer, J.D. Hello. There he is. And here we are. Today's pod officially kicks off our fifth season of No Dunks at the Athletic and our 19th season of daily NBA podcasting overall. Year 19. That's a lot of years. That's a whole <laughs> lot of years. Uh, we're back to five, sometimes six, heck, sometimes seven, when somebody's feisty on the weekend. Shows here in the No Dunks feed, which means Matty O's fantastic Is This Good Pod. It's now solely back to its own feed. Get out of here, ITG. <laughs> And uh, the guys landed a great guest to kick off their sort of fall schedule. Yes, great photo here of their guest. It's the Athletic Zone, Fred Katz. He joined Matty O and JD to discuss, among many other things, haggling at Walmart, schmearing a bagel, and uh, talking about the worst named fruits. Of course, Fred Katz was on. You're talking yeah. fruits. So uh, go check out Is This Good? With the very funny Fred Katz, uh, and is this good? Has its own YouTube feed, which you should subscribe to, and its own podcast feed, which you also should subscribe to. Love that photo of Fred. I uh, love that Photoshop of some giant shoes. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> this is going to be a good one. Well, I mean, I haven't listened to this pod yet, but I know Matty O in doing his homework for his guest in Fred Katz was, uh, you know, what's apping us? Hey, how tall is Fred Katz? <laughs> how tall is this guy? Now, what did we say? We seem to agree on like a 5'10". Yeah. 5'10", it, maybe 11? Yeah, the over-under was 5'10 and a half. Yeah. I think. Yeah, and we were like, yeah, maybe hit the under. We had just seen him. <laughs> like, he's about my height. In my head, he was. Allegedly. But this guy might be six feet tall? What uh, the hell's going on? He's 100% six feet tall. I remember meeting him for the first time and saying, hi, Fred. He's you were not, looking up not. at Fred Katz? Kind of, kind of. Fred Katz on the boulevard? We're going to measure him when he's here. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. I <laughs> Maybe he grew. Maybe, you know, a lot of these guys add muscle. Some of them add an inch or yeah, two. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. I remember season. Giannis growing right. early in his NBA career. Fred Katz doing the same. I think it's, uh, I think the Knicks play here in Atlanta, like the first week of the season. Maybe we get him in the uh, factory here. Not to talk, just to measure. Just <laughs> see how he stacks up. Just measure this guy. Uh, shout out to the stream team joining us live right now on YouTube. We love to see that. Smash that like button. Make sure you subscribe. Tell all your friends. And hello to the podcast listeners. Leave your boys a five-star rating and review. We got a fun one here. Again, as we officially kick off Season 5 of No Dunks with The Athletic, we're doing some Mm over-unders. We're looking at the win totals. All of these coming from our friends at BetMGM. We've decided to split this into two podcasts. We're doing the Eastern Conference today, the Western Conference tomorrow. We'll have a bunch of other like season preview podcasts as the week goes on, including a lot of NBA award predictions. But let's just jump right into it, Trey, because again, we've got 15 teams to dissect here. We start in the Atlantic Division. JD put together some slick get, uh, graphics here to sort of show us the over-under win totals for each division. So there it is, the Celtics, Nets, Knicks, 76ers, and Raptors. And we're going to go through these team by team. And we start with Boston at 54 and a half wins. Over or under on that, I'll just give you the sort of setup for this squad, TK. Despite making three chips to the conference finals in four years, the Celtics made some changes Hmm. to the roster. Marcus Smart, Time Lord, Brogdon all traded away. Grant Williams and Batman there. He, I guess he left in the Batmobile to <laughs> Dallas. And the big guys coming on board, Chris Stapps, Porzingis, and Drew Holiday. O'Shea Brissett as a, as a, an, a, also signed as maybe a replacement for Grant Williams. Uh, but some heavy turnover for a very good team, like I said. So what impact does that have on this this win total for you at 54 and a half. Definitely the biggest change the Celtics have had, I guess, probably since Kyrie Irving uh, was in town. So uh, we've seen Jason and Jalen together for quite a few seasons now, but the cast of characters is definitely changing around them. 
Skeets people like to be pretty smart about these over-unders because mm-hmm. it's really hard to predict. And I thought, like, looking at these lines, I was like, these are the pros here. <laughs> these, are, <laughs> these are tough. Um, but I did create a system for this. Okay. Yeah, it's called Vibes. Victories in Basketball Estimation Statistic. Okay, this I like the start of this. Yeah, it sounds good. We take five <laughs> categories into account. Uh, the V, Vibes, yep. of course. Number two, Intelligence. Number three, basketball. Number four, experience. And number five, the system. Oh, there's something here. Yeah, you rate them on a scale of 1 to 15, and then add them all up to get the estimated wins for the end of the season. Eat your heart out, Bill Simmons. Yeah. TK take it over this season. Best possible record, 75 and 7, if you get a 15 out of everything. Okay. So how does the Celtics vibes ranking go? <laughs> I'm going over. I'll tell you that much. 57 okay. and 25 last season, but like we're saying... Kind of an identity swap for the Boston Celtics. A lot of defensive-minded players going out in these trades, bringing back um, some offensive-minded players. Uh, Drew Holiday, you know, he's a two-way guy, but Porzingis is out there for his offense, I think, and they're definitely buying into Missoula ball. When he took over for Brad Stevens, or for uh, Ime Udoka, actually, uh, the Celtics started shooting a ton of threes, and now you look at the lineups they're going to be putting out there. Now that Porzingis is going to be playing alongside uh, Al Horford quite a bit, shooting at all five positions basically so this team now seems like more of an offensive team to me than a defensive team but i think that's going to be fine at least during uh the regular season like i said 57 wins last year they had a great season i don't think they got worse so to me seeing their over under at 54 and a half i gotta go over yeah that makes sense i mean they have an awesome top six just incredible tatum brown holiday porzingis Derek white and his bald head and then Al Horford. <laughs> the real cue with this team is the health of Porzingis and, and really the health, you know, slash age, I call it, of Horford. They're pretty, pretty shallow after those two big guys. Now, O'Shea Brissett, like I said, there might be a role for him here. Sure. In fact, I think there will be. I like him. He's Canadian. Of course, I like him. But yeah, how much can Horford play? Does he continue to start? Do they bring him off the bench? We doubt we see him in back-to-back situations. He didn't last year play in those games. And then Porzingis, I mean, he's looked great in preseason. He looks incredible. He looks like an awesome fit with the Jays and with Drew and all that. But will he just be able to play, you know, 70-plus games? Uh, if he does, I feel like it's an easy over. They started 18-4 and four last year. They were yeah. hot. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hot out of the gate. And like you said, they won 57 games. Now, I gave you 54 and a half. That was, uh, again, by way of bet MGM. I've seen it like anywhere between 54 and a half to like 56 and a half on, others, on some of the other books. So maybe that, like, you, maybe you pause a little bit once you start inching up there. But 54 and a half, like, it feels like a 55 win team. I got to be honest. Yeah, exactly right. And when I was looking at the Eastern Conference in general, I like tried to end up with two 55 win teams. It's going to be the Bucks and it's going to be the Celtics. So here, I think they could easily get to 55. Like you're saying, health is going to be a question for them with Porzingis. If he plays 70 plus games, it'll be the first time since his rookie season that he plays more than 70 games. That would be impressive. Yeah. You know, we've been questioning whether Al Horford will fall off for a couple of seasons. Still a question mark, I think, but that's more concerning I think come playoff time during the regular season like Cornette will be fine during the regular season Peyton Pritchard will be fine during the regular season Brissett maybe Lamar Stevens maybe in Svi Mihailuk can play during the regular season maybe not so much when it comes down to uh, championship time Mm -hmm. but we're talking about stacking up regular season wins here and I think the Celtics will do a lot of that did I also see that Jeff Van Gundy has sort of joined the Celtics yeah, they like got a brass up as like a, you know he's like a consultant I guess is that is that true? He's some sort of senior consultant yeah. and they have didn't they bring in Steven Silas after he got let go of the Rockets last year? I think Sam Cassell is kind of like tutoring Jason Tatum there, specifically. There's Charles Lee as well. Exactly. Yeah. So you know there was a lot of uh, question marks about Joe Missoula at the end of last season whether he would even get, be getting brought back. Yep. He obviously did. They extended him, but then they also beefed up the coaching staff around him so it's not just him out there and you know year two probably goes better for him than year one I think okay so we're leaning towards the over at the end of this podcast when we go through all 15 Eastern Conference teams Trey and I will both lock in three of our favorites yeah, you so you know right now maybe the Celtics here in the mix all right let's keep it moving Brooklyn Nets 37 and a half wins they traded KD they traded Kyrie they finished last year 12 and 15 after doing that They were the only team to get swept in the first round, uh, but overall had 45 wins. Again, they had some superstars on that squad. They signed Darius Baisley, Lonnie Walker IV, Dennis Smith Smith Jr., 
and uh, with a pair of late first round picks, grab some uh, you know versatile forwards in, in Whitehead and Clowney. They lost Joe Harris. They lost Seth Curry. Watanabe's gone. Patty Mills is gone. So um, you know around the edges sort of type players. 37 and a half wins. What do you do with this squad? This is a weird one. This one I had a lot of trouble with. Like, I probably went through the entire Eastern Conference twice before I got to the Nets and actually felt comfortable about making something because the number seems too low. 37 and a half wins is not all that many, but like you're saying, after the All-Star break, just 11 and 13, they were a 45-win team last year because of Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving, yeah. but they still got good guys. Yeah. Like, they still have their top, the top of their rotation, probably their first seven or eight players would all be part of a rotation basically everywhere else you know Spencer Dinwiddie not a great number one guy but he can create shots for himself he can create shots for others Mikhail Bridges everybody loves this dude they've got 10 guys who can play at least a little bit I think you know like it feels like their entire starting lineup is a guy who is one notch a little bit too high for where they should be like Spencer Dinwiddie should probably be a number three or number four he's a number two here Mikhail Bridges should probably be a number two he's a number one yeah, here yeah but I still think that this is a quality team, um, and they don't have the question marks of when are we actually going to make a trade? When are we going to be getting a new team in here? So <laughs> ultimately, I'm going over uh, on Ooh. this one as well. They could be a 40-win team. I think that's uh, reasonable. So yeah, give me a give me a not confident over. I will not be locking this one in. You sort of see the the Nets, you know, flirting with a play in. I think that's great. They yeah. either get in yeah. or just miss out in the final week. So that would put you probably around, like you're saying, 39, 40, 41 wins, uh, at least if it's similar to last year. Is the biggest question mark with this team like Ben Simmons? I mean, I mean, or is that not really part of the equation at all to you? Because that's not, if, if, uh, not at all. He's a mystery man for me. Anything they get from him would be good. I don't think he's going to be hurting them this year. Right. He played 42 games over the last two seasons. This guy, we, like, we have just barely seen him yes uh in fact with Mikhail Bridges barely played at all with him we're seeing him here in the preseason you're a big fan I know we, he, he looks uh sort of like Ben Simmons of old looks like a guy it looks like a somewhat confident basketball player again that's refreshing um so I mean this to me how he plays and if he plays is a huge part of the equation for 37 and a half wins it feels like almost it I dare I say lock if he's actually playing but you can't you know you can't bank on that so that's a tough one I'm with you um and some of these guys they've brought in, you know, Dennis Smith Jr., Lonnie Walker the Fourth, Baisley, these are all these are all just like rotation dudes They're that guys. are gonna They're one maybe dudes. one of them pops off. Maybe not. Um yeah, it's a tough one. Thirty seven and a half. Everybody chiming in here in the stream team. I'd love to see it. A lot of people saying uh what we're sort of saying. They feel like one of those mid teams, which, you know, 40, 41, 42 wins. So that would put them over, if you believe that. Uh the Knicks. Forty five and a half wins. Having won a playoff series for the first time in 10 years, the Knicks are running it back. Listen to this from Shu, who I think is in the stream team here. The Knicks have retained 12 players who accounted for 90% of their 2022-23 regular season minutes. That's the league's second highest rate. They used the mid-level exception to sign Dante DiVincenzo, traded Obi Top into the Pacers for two second-round picks. Derrick Rose is also gone. He's in Memphis. But that's really it. This is really a similar team to yep. uh, that got the fifth seed last year, 47 wins, and, and took down the Cavs in in the first round. So is 45 and a half disrespectful? <laughs> Does Bet MGM slap in the face of Knicks fans? Uh, maybe Bing it bong? is. Uh, maybe it is because, like you're saying, they brought everybody back, and 47 wins was a great season for the Knicks. Even better, they started 10 and 12, and basically Tom Thibodeau flipped the rotation. Evan Fournier out. We're getting a lot more quickly, and that's when they took off. So, yeah, top in DiVincenzo, the switch there. Probably a wash. Kind of whether this is an over or under will come down to Julius Randle. He had a great All-NBA season. He had a thumbs down, literally, season. And then he had, again, last year, another thumbs up All-NBA season. Yeah. Is he going back to hating the fans in New York? Or is he going back to putting up a double-double, shooting well from three, partnering nicely with Jalen Brunson as two guys who will just pound the ball and get inside? I don't know. I think if he takes even a small step back, the Knicks probably go under here. And of course, I'm a hater, so I'm going under on the New York Knicks. But I think they're in like the 45 win yeah. range. They could easily get back to 47 wins like last year, but I'm betting against it right now. There has been very, very little national 
preseason buzz about the Knicks. Yeah. And I can't tell if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It feels like a good thing in a weird way. Like, they actually sort of have an identity now. They have a roster. I mean, their their identity is like a bunch of wildcats. And, uh, and you know, obviously yes. Brunson and Randall as they're sort of like these guys are like borderline all-star guys and borderline all-NBA guys, if not. Uh, so they're good. They have a chance which is the opposite of last year, as you just said, uh, TK, to hit the ground running because of that chemistry, that they have all the familiarity with each other. But I'm looking at their schedule. There are not many gimmies in the first 10 games here for the Knicks. They play the Celtics twice. They play in Milwaukee. They play once here in Atlanta, like you said, when Fred Katz comes in and we measure him. (laughs) They play in New Orleans. They host the Clippers. And they play twice against their first-round opponent, who they did take out. But in the Cleveland Cavaliers, they're going to be looking for some sort of revenge there. Yeah. They're only, like, easy games that I throw in air quotes are, like, the Spurs and Hornets. Like, that's a hell of a start there when we're talking Celtics and Bucks and, like, even the Clippers and the Cavs. Like, woo. Um, but I think they're starting better than 10 and 12, like you said, when they switched it up. Um, so I sort of – I'm leaning towards an over, but it's not feeling like a lock for me. I think the Knicks, like – best possible season they could have they could finish third in the eastern conference if brunson has an all-star caliber season like he did last year and randall does the same and you get another great performance from quickly and mitchell robinson has a healthier season like if everything breaks right the knicks could challenge uh for 50 wins but you look at the last two seasons they went from 37 wins to 47 wins last year obviously they added jalen brunson uh but to me they probably just fall somewhere in the middle of that though on the higher end so i don't know give me 46 wins i suppose and then everybody pointing out here in the stream team Uh, is this going to be the team that trades for a big name because that's what we're always doing with the knicks you know is this a town's destination you know people are trying to get Embiid to new york and you know throw in any other superstar that maybe becomes disgruntled let's say uh this coming season knicks have been slow playing it uh recently but they do obviously have a big chunk of change and a whole bunch of assets that they could throw around for somebody uh obviously they've been uh linked to towns like you're saying apparently uh the knicks and towns were flirting recently this weekend is what i hear that's what i heard on twitter um but also they've been linked to Embiid. he likely doesn't become available Mm -hmm. uh at the very least this season so more than likely the knicks stand pat once again because even a app after a disappointing season, they bounced back. Like the Knicks are okay right now. Like they're in the mix. They're a solid playoff team. So just keep being normal and things will tend to work out better in the long run. I do believe. Yeah. Well, you brought up Embiid or we talked about that. Let's move to the Philadelphia 76ers, 48 and a half wins. What's new with Philly. Let's go through it. Harden. He exercised his player option, and then he demanded a trade. (laughs) He's still there. And called his GM a liar, and now it's like a messy divorce going on here. Like, things are getting really awkward here, but he's still there. Uh, Nick Nurse was hired to replace Doc Rivers, who obviously couldn't get the Sixers past the conference semifinals in his three seasons. They re-signed Paul Reed. John Hollinger was very happy about that. And Maury added some minimum contracts to fill out the bench. We're talking Patrick Beverly, Kelly Oubre Jr. I think Mo Bamba's there. I think Danny Green is back. (laughs) Uh, So, yeah, that's sort of what they did. They lost uh, the minivan, George Niang, uh, Jalen McDaniels, and Shake Milton all signing with other teams. 48 and a half. Philly, which way is Trey leaning here? That's a low number. That's a pretty low number for a team that won 54 games and is bringing back everybody except for George Niang for the most part. Right. Of course, the hardened situation is like when Tom Sandoval and Ariana were living together after all the scandal went down. Can you believe that? They were still (laughs) living together. Just like James Harden is going to practice. He's showing up. He's still there. And things are fine right now. Things are fine. Well, yeah, or not the real no time. real games, games exactly, yet. Yeah. Exactly right. Um, I don't know. This obviously factors in Harden either somehow submarining the season or getting traded at some point to have the number be this low for a team that has the reigning MVP. But I'm going under. I just don't think this team got great this season. Obviously, the hardened cloud hanging over their heads, I think, is going to be a problem. Uh, but, man, they should – even if Harden gets traded, and if it's just Embiid and Maxi and whatever Harden returns in, retru- in in a trade, they should still be able to challenge for 50 wins, having Embiid yeah. as the guy. But I'm going for a stupid under here. I think that I will regret – I could easily regret this one. Yeah, I think it was Shu uh, once again pointing out the Sixers have 12 potential free agents – after this season so a lot of guys obviously playing for a payday it's basically everybody except Embiid yeah uh he's the lone exception but what's going on in that guy's mind right now in Joel Embiid's mind like if you you really think about it he's coming off an MVP season he averages 31 and 10 
He's only 29 years old. He's like in the prime of his career, and he sees the Bucks and the Celtics, his primary competition in this conference, to just even get to a conference finals, let alone a finals. They take the big swings. They, in theory, get much better. Uh, of course, I'm talking about you know Drew Holiday and Porzingis to the Celtics, and then obviously Damian Lillard to the Bucks. And he sees this once again with his team, like the start of a season, just like, sort of just like, ah, oh, just like such a gross start. You know, it was Ben Simmons prior, now it's James Harden. It's like, that's got to that's weigh on you a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. He says uh, the Bucks and Celtics didn't pass them. Yeah. You know, they, they were, were already passed. They were already passed. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They didn't lap us. Yeah, that's basically right. It's <laughs> that's like a race. That's what it comes down to. <laughs> I'd be curious how he feels about uh, where they fall in comparison to Miami since, you know, Philadelphia better record than Miami last year, but obviously uh, the Heat had a lot more postseason um, success. A lot of people look at the 21-22 season when trying to figure out how the 76ers are going to play this year because Ben Simmons was in the midst of his holdout that year. So he obviously didn't start with the team and Harden came in halfway through. They won 51 games. You're probably not getting a James Harden in return for this James Harden, though, <laughs> is my concern. Yeah, so, right. um, I but, don't know. but you are saying amidst all this turmoil, amidst all this drama, you got Joel Embiid. You have still Max. You still have Harris. You got good players. You got Nick Nurse. That guy loves the regular season. That you might still, yeah, you still win fifty games. You know, Patrick Beverly is not going to have any let up. No, he's going to be on this team. Probably good for them. Uh, PJ Tucker is going to be on this team. So, man, I'm almost talking myself into a fifty here, Skeets. Uh, and this is without factory in James Harden looking good. Uh, you know, looking skinny <laughs> in preseason. That's always my Achilles heel when it comes to literally any James Harden team. But. I'll stick with an under because I wrote it down. Okay. I think I would um, – man, I feel like I've gone over on every single one here. But, man, 48 and a half is – That's a low number. That's a they low said it number appropriately for a guy low. that is an MVP and was runner-up two years prior. I mean, if he plays, a guy like that takes you to 50 wins. That's the truth. Usually. And yeah, Nick, Nick – I mean, I always keep forgetting Nick Nurse is their head coach now. Uh, he'll be crouching there on the sidelines. Can't okay, wait for how about 21-22 Denver Nuggets? No uh, Jamal Murray – no Michael Porter Jr. Jokic coming off an MVP season, won the MVP, and they only got to 48 wins. 48 wins. Something similar could happen d- with d- Philadelphia. Different conference, but yeah, okay. Well, I mean, that's why they said it at 48 and a yeah, half. They it's know it's too good. They yeah. know they're going to win 48, 49, or 50 games. It's going to be one of those, basically. So flip a coin. Yeah. Uh, final team here in the Atlantic Division, the Toronto Raptors at 36 and a half wins. Uh, Darko is in to replace Nick Nurse as head coach. That's a huge vibes move. I don't know where that lands in your vibe system, but that's big. Uh, with the 13th pick in the draft, they took Grady Dick. Uh, after Van Vliet went and got the bag in Houston, the Raptors quickly pivoted and signed Dennis Schroeder to a two-year deal with the mid-level exception. They also re-signed uh, Jakob Pertl. Gary Trent Jr. opted in, surprisingly, into his about $19 million player option. And uh, Jalen McDaniels also comes north. Those are the sort of key, key moves here. 36 and a half. Has a lot of Raptors fans pissed off. <laughs> no way, really? Oh, yeah. You won't believe it. Yeah, Toronto Raptors fans with, uh, you know, a, a complex. Um, but, yeah, <laughs> does feel a little low. This feels incredibly low to me. 37 wins should be easy enough for the Raptors. They were 41-41 and 41 last year. Yeah, Fred Van Vliet is gone, and he's, you know, an important part of the team and definitely a leader here. I suppose there is some blow-it-up potential uh, yes. with the Raptors yes. once again this year, which is why it's so low. But I also went over, and I was completely convinced uh, last night when I saw that Drake's son released a song. I watched the whole thing, Skeets. I watched the whole video of a six-year-old freestyling. Freestyling. He has a song? He has a song. Grady Dick is in the video for the song with Drake. <laughs> Don't talk to my man like that. My man, my man, my man. This kid is the new Drake. <laughs> <laughs> you got to check this thing out. It's wow. literally unbelievable that uh, Adonis <laughs> Graham, I guess. I don't know. Adonis has his own song. There's a line in it, Skeets. I was playing on my iPad. Then I broke my iPad. <laughs> Say it again. I was playing on my iPad. Then I broke my iPad. What? Bars. No, that's not bars. That's not bars? I mean, I guess. How old is he? Uh, he is very yeah. small. Okay. <laughs> he, is, he is younger than Criss Cross at their peak. Wow. Uh, but yeah, I went over for the Raptors. I don't know if I've been uh, Raptors pilled too hard by you guys here, but it just feels like a team that is bringing back, for the most part, all of their team after a disappointing season. 
I don't know how Darko factors in. He seems like a development coach to me, but the Raptors aren't necessarily on a development path uh, now. So I think they could be a 500 team again, though. Yeah. If you've seen any preseason action, and I usually put nothing into it, there is at least a different uh, vibe to this team in terms of like ball movement. That seems to be what he is trying to drive home. Less pound the rock here with, you know, what was Van Vliet, even Siakam to some extent. And it is like ball movement, ball movement, ball movement. The Raptors had a point differential of a 45-win team last season. And you're going to hear this a lot. They were 15-10 and 10 after they picked up Pirtle at the trade deadline. It turns out having a capable center on the roster helps. They're not playing for any draft uh, pick here unless they're one of the worst teams in the league because that pick is I forget what its protection is but it will very likely be going to the you know to the Spurs so it's not like they're like gonna really really lean into like being one of the worst because they just can't be with the talent on the team I just wonder like yeah they're trying to find their identity this team like what they are uh, and so the question is and I think that's why this line is so low because Vegas is like are they going to are they going to keep their valuable assets here and their and their really talented players or are they just going to boop press the reboot button and sort of move them and and like sort of start all over again and maybe that's draft pick halls coming a uh, hall coming back or young players and that's why they're like we don't know what they're going to do they're probably going to have a pretty good idea like you know 3 weeks 4 weeks into the season what type of raps team we have here yeah we shall see uh but toronto it seems to me doesn't really tank unless they are playing in florida and yeah. I think that most of their games will be in Canada this year. So I doubt uh, they tank. I just, it feels like Siakam at least wants to stick around long enough to sign an extension, uh, and then perhaps get traded yeah. uh, in the future. But it feels like a team that will be heavily rumored uh, up until the trade deadline. Schumann here in the chat. OG Ananobi and Siakam free agents equal possible trades. Again, I think that is baked into this 36 yeah, and a maybe. half line. I think if like if all that's off the board and then you just got the new coach and this is the roster with Schroeder replacing Van Vliet, I feel like that number would be higher. But they are like they're hedging here because they're like those guys could we be don't know moved. Yet. And then they could really lean into the development under a Darko stuff like that. Ooh, I almost want to swerve. I think so many people are going to be pounding this over. Yes, they will. And I think I'm going to go the opposite way. This is a reverse jinx. I can reverse tell. jinx. I can see great, it. Isn't it? I'm leaning towards that, but it won't be a lock regardless. 36 and a half feels low. All right, we got to take our break. And when we come back, we will get into the Central Division. Don't go anywhere. This classic episode of No Dunks is brought to you by BetterHelp. You ever feel like your brain is getting in its own way? Maybe you're trying to fall asleep but you keep fantasizing about going back to college so you can throw the perfect pitch sequence in a wiffle ball championship game that you already won. Wow. Outside fastball slider backdoor changeup. Just saying. Sounds good. Yeah. <sighs> should have seen the way I could make that ball dance skis. <laughs> you ever know what you should do, what's good for you, but you just can't do it? Therapy can help you figure out what's holding you back so you can work for yourself instead of against yourself. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapist anytime for no additional charge. Make your brain your friend with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash no dunks today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com slash no dunks. All right, still here in the Classic Factory. If you're joining us live on YouTube, maybe you came in a little late smash the like button and subscribe we are back to five days a week here with the start of the new nba season right around the corner and we go to the central division we're looking at the over under win totals by way of bet mgm the bulls the Cavs, the pistons the pacers and the bucks sexy graphic there from jd the chicago bulls right on the heels of the raptors look at this <laughs> and uh bet mgm says they're one win better than my raps, uh, but <laughs> call hey, it now call it now. Season over. Bulls beat raps. Thirty-seven and a half wins. Uh, Vucci baby got a new three-year, sixty million dollar contract. Uh, Javon Carter, Tory Craig added to sort of help out a bench that maybe needs it. They lost Pat Bev, Derek Jones Jr., uh, and for a second consecutive season here, no Lonzo Ball due to severe knee issues. Where are we going? <laughs> with your Chicago Bulls. Are the Bulls back? Are you going to be yelling that every second show this year? I didn't or? yell it last year. No, I know. They weren't know. even back at all. They no. haven't been back since January of 2021. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's been, been a, a while. long time since they've been back. <laughs> oh, but man, Skeets, I'm going over. 
I'm doing it. I'm a stupid idiot. 40 and 42 last year, but a positive point differential. Yeah. And they've got their Pat Bev type for the entire year in Javon Carter. Literally having a point guard was a change for the Bulls during the last third of the season. They've got some clarity with regards to Lonzo Ball's situation this year that they didn't have last year. Torrey Craig is a guy who, when he was on every other team, I'm like, I don't think he's that good. And now that he's on the Bulls, I was like, thank you, Lord, for Torrey Craig. Somebody <laughs> that can shoot a three-pointer. <laughs> oh, boy. They have been a pretty healthy team outside of Lonzo Ball. Like, all of their starters are playing 70-plus games. That's a concern if it goes the other way. The Bulls, just like the Raptors, are in trade potential yeah. land with DeRozan coming up for an extension with Levine on his big deal. But Levine was pretty solid at the end of last season. DeRozan seems to at least want to stick around uh, with the Bulls. For some reason, they had a great defense last year. Like, they finished fifth in defense and it, uh, maybe 24th in offense. And you look at the personnel and you're like, that should be flipped uh, on the complete opposite side. So I think this is a not inspiring over here for the Chicago Bulls. According to the Sporting News, the Bulls had a point differential of a 44-win team last season, but they had terrible luck in the clutch, which is weird because two seasons ago with DeMar DeRozan hitting game winner after game winner, they were 25-16 and 16 in clutch games. But last season, that number fell off a cliff to 15-23, and 23, so it basically flipped. Yeah. So does it you know, average out here and just sort of like become sort of 500 in the clutch? If it does, that probably helps their case for an over because this is similar to the Raptors here. You're right. Which team out of our two is going to trade one of their guys first? That's a big part of this. And and then just the other part of like, yeah, can they can anybody of these teams like the sad part is we're we're debating the over of 36 and a half for the Raps, 37 and a half for the Bulls. So even if they're still like a you know a 500 team, which they both were last year, yeah, yeah. it's still disappointing. It's not good. Yeah, exactly. It's like, the weirdest part of all a, this. A great season for both of our squads right now would be 500. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Literally mid. We're hoping for mid. Yeah, man. Oh yeah, it's like they're both <laughs> mid. So which one is gonna wise up and say, okay, let's get off the treadmill of mediocrity here and like literally maybe sort of lean into a bit of a rebuild and, and more of a tank. But um, which player on the Bulls do you think has to take the biggest leap uh, just looking at your roster? The only young guy is Patrick Williams yeah. for the most part. I mean, Kobe White had a good season last year. I think he's going to be better again this year. He's become a solid player, uh, but I don't think he can be necessarily a ceiling raiser uh, for this team. But if Patrick Williams can play like he did against the Nuggets last night, he was putting the ball on the floor, getting to the hoop, a lot more patient, a lot more aggressive. That's been the big concern uh, for Patrick Williams through his first three years. But he's going to be playing, uh, hopefully, to get a big deal. So yeah. he's got to be the guy to take the step forward. And as the youngest guy around who's actually playing minutes, like he's the thing that could really change their outlook. I'm leaning towards an under with the Bulls. I think we're going to be in Many for a are. long Many season are. with yeah, both yeah, our yeah. teams again, even though okay. I know there's like we're trying to get some buzz and hype going. But uh, I don't know. Cleveland Cavaliers, 50 and a half wins. Uh, so they added Donovan Mitchell before last season, and that really sort of cranked up their uh, their potential and their fans' expectations, and they really got there. Can they rack up another 50-plus win season, though, and can they actually advance in the playoffs? That's the question here. They added uh, Max Struess, four years, $63 million. That was a sign-and-trade with Miami. George Niang is there to help stretch the offense. So those guys, you know, they're shooters. They're three-point shooters. Um what do you think here with uh, with Cleveland? I like this over big time. 51 wins last year, and they got better. I think they obviously uh, got better. The defense is still going to be good uh, with Mobley and Allen back there. But last season for the Cavs, the definition of a hodgepodge at the three. And I think they got better adding Max Struess and George Niang to come in off the bench. Basically, the biggest loss, I feel like, for the Cavs is Ricky Rubio. So they don't necessarily have yeah. a ton of backcourt depth um, when you're looking at the team. But their oldest starter is going to be Max Struess. And that guy's 27 years old. So you have to imagine playing together in year two, they get a little bit better. Definitely a disappointing end of the season. They're going to have to prove it in the playoffs uh, when it comes down to it. But if we're looking at regular season wins, I definitely like the Cavs over 50 and a half. Yeah, Rubio out and then maybe Chetty Osman, I guess you could say, as a, sure, another sure, guy sure, that sure. was a rotational guy. But yeah, I mean... You've got your backcourt in Garland Mitchell. You've got your frontcourt. I know Jared Allen's a little banged up here, even heading into the start of the season. But but Mobley, with Jared Allen, Mobley should be. 
he should probably make that little bit of a jump there in a You're in a third cool. year, like that little leap we see from a lot of guys. So that would be big. And just the idea of like, I think more than anything, like, yes, you got Struess and you got Niang. I think, you know, combine them, they're basically 37, 38% three-point shooters in their career. That's really good. They just need to up the amount of takes on this team. Uh, they rank 24th in three-point attempts. I think that can be a lot higher. Again, with with Mitchell and Garland creating for some shooters around them in those guys, that could help. Um, so, yeah, I mean, can they just be... Why can't they be the exact same as last year at a minimum? In the regular season, you know, they they were garbage against the Knicks. They got completely embarrassed. Yeah, they got punked. Uh, yeah. And it was weird to see it happening, like, on the glass, the, getting big boyed by a team that starts, like, two seven-footers. Yeah. That was certainly odd to see, but two seven-footers seven footers, two seven footers works great uh, in the regular season. So I think, like, at worst, they're going to be, like, a top-five defense. Yeah. And if they take even a little bit of a step forward from ninth last year, this could be uh, – this, to me, should be the third-place team in the Eastern Conference. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Sounds like we might have a lock on our hands here from Trey Kirby. 50 and a half there at Cleveland. I'm definitely leaning towards just over. Uh, Detroit Pistons. A lot less wins, says Ben <laughs> MGM. 28 and a half. New coach Monty Williams gets a crack here with this young Pistons squad. They did add some vets, I think, to maybe try and win some games. I mean, Joe Harris is there. Monte Morris, they both came in trades. And then they're big sort of... Draft pick, Asir Thompson, with the number five pick there in June. And Kate Cunningham should be playing. He yep. has not played a lot. Played 64 games in his rookie season, only 12 last year. Uh, what do you think? Detroit, 28 and a half. I think they're going to be better this year. Monty Williams, a good coach at the very least. Anticipating a better season for Cade Cunningham, just hoping he plays a lot more. I don't know that Asir Thompson is going to do a lot this season. He's a really young dude, and... The last two Pistons draft picks want the ball in their hands in Cunningham and Ivy. The team, though, doesn't make a lot of sense to me. There's yeah. a lot of potential in the backcourt. Everybody needs the ball. The front court is all like reclamation projects and Jalen Duran, who's the best one. But for some reason, they keep bringing in additional guys. Boyan Bogdanovich, he's still there. Yeah. Maybe he gets traded uh, at some point. But the number is just too high for me. They finished 17 and 65 last season. They probably weren't that bad. They probably would have been in the 20-win range if Cade plays an entire season, but I just don't think they can add 12 wins this season, so I'm going under here. I have to fact-check this, but I don't think the Pistons have won more than 23 games in, like, five years. A minute? Yeah. Yeah. That sounds insane when I say it out loud. Let me get basketball reference up on that because 20 wins in the 1920 season followed by 20 followed by 23 followed by 17 followed by this season. Okay, so uh, the last four seasons there. This is our fifth. Wow. To jump up here like uh Vegas has them at, we got to get to 29. Mm-hmm. It's a hell of an improvement. Yeah, it'd be a great but it's season. It's a big big improvement and I also wonder yeah, do like where do James Wiseman and Killian Hayes fit into like the long-term plans of this squad? You know, Bagley's there. You said Bogdanovich. I mean, is he is he going to be moved at a deadline? You know, finally. <laughs> we'll um, but I love the talent. I I do love Cade. I like what we saw from Ivy. Jalen Duran looks good, really good. And Osir Thompson, yeah. I mean, I like the idea that he can come in and sort of play defensively for them right away. But it seems a little too big of a jump. That's a big, big jump here from, you know, basically the bottom of the Eastern Conference into getting a little closer flirting with the plan. So I probably would just go just under. I think there's going to be a drastic improvement. I really do. Because I love the idea of Monty Williams coming in here. We've sort of seen him do this with Phoenix like way back in the day. But it was a slow build. Yep. Um, and, and there's going to be a development there and just a system put in place that he's going to be running. So probably leaning just under. But a lot of people here on the stream team, very excited. They want some overs for Detroit. They think they'll be like a 30-win team. That would be an incredible season uh, for Detroit. I think all that matters this year is that Cade Cunningham proves it, that he can be their number one franchise cornerstone because he's had some good moments uh, for sure, had a nice strong close to the end of his rookie year. Obviously, we didn't see much of him uh, last season, but uh, the jury is still out as far as I'm concerned. The guy is shooting 30% from three uh, in the NBA, and he barely gets to the line. So one of those has to change. He either has to start getting to the line more and racking up the points that way, or he has to find that jumper that he had for only one season in college. Let's move to the Indiana Pacers at 38 and a half. I thought this was a difficult one. Uh, last year, Pacers weren't good enough to make the playoffs, but they weren't bad enough you know, for a realistic shot at like at the Wemby sweepstakes by any means. They finished 35 and 47. Halliburton, 
established himself as one of the best point guards uh, in the league, made the All-Star game. They gave him a max. Miles Turner was finally removed from the trade rumor mill. <laughs> he had an extension with the Pacers. Uh, Benedict Matherin, he was arguably the league's top rookie for eh, maybe – Six weeks? First half of the yeah, season, Yeah, at least maybe. five yeah. or six weeks uh, before he hit the the rookie wall there. They also signed Bruce Brown from the Nuggets, two years, 45 mil. And they drafted uh, Ben Shepard, uh, Jairus Walker, and they traded for Obi Toppin. Their big subtraction, I guess, is Chris Duarte. I mean, uh, I mean, not a whole lot left. Yep. They just added some pieces. So this one, 38 and a half, feels high, feels low to you. It feels about right, but I'm going over. I have liked this over for the Pacers. I think their biggest minus this season, you're right, Chris Duarte not coming back, but the loss of the surprise factor is going to be big for the Pacers because they definitely caught people off guard last season yeah. playing their super fast style, and they racked up a ton of wins in the first half of the season. You mentioned they finished 35 and 47, but that's with Tyrese Halliburton missing 13 of the last 15 games. They were 28 and 28 when he played. They just kind of reinvested in that style of play. They paid him his huge deal. They brought in Bruce Brown, another guy who can play fast. Obi Toppin, somebody who should thrive playing in a transition uh, system. So I'm in on the Pacers this season. I can't wait to watch them. Like, I think yeah. they're going to be one of the most fun teams to watch. I love the way Halliburton plays, and I think he just gets the best out of the rest of his teammates because you know if you get open, you're going to get the ball, and you're going to have a chance to score. They're going to give up a ton of points, which is also why they're very watchable to me. But I think they should be – in the play-in mix, in the 40-win range. So over on the Pacers So here. you're going over. Because, mm-hmm. you're again, you're looking at that 35 wins last year. You set a 500 team with Halliburton. They added some pe- – like, Bruce Brown's going to help. Real guys. Obi Toppin is probably going to yeah. play and help. Maybe you get something from one of their rooks there in their new rooks, probably Walker more than, uh, than Shepard to begin with. Yeah, it's like, can they win four more games? Feel, sure feels that way. It almost feels like a trick here. So. <laughs> yeah, like they're setting us up for something. So uh, I would probably be leaning just towards the over as well. Buddy Heald, he is still a pacer. He's still around, yeah. He is still on that squad. Buddy Heald and Miles Turner. <laughs> Those guys are still here. <laughs> I had them both as my most likely to be traded last season. That's right. That's <laughs> this is right. the year, though. This is the they year. spite you. Yeah. Uh, all right, and our final team here in the Central Division, the Milwaukee Bucks. The line at Bet MGM 56 and a half. Everybody knows what they did. They swapped Drew Holiday for Damian Lillard. They swapped Mike Budenholzer for rookie coach Adrian Griffin. They swapped Grayson Allen and Javon Carter for Malik Beasley and campaign. And they sprinkled in a little Robin Lopez because family. Um, <laughs> 56 and a half. You probably just watched the highlights at the very least of, uh, of Dame and uh, the Greek Freak playing together for the first time in their preseason action. Um, where, where are you going? I think they're going to be good. I think Damon and uh, Giannis are going to be a quality pairing together, Skeets, but I'm going under here. 58 wins last season, and I kind of just looked at it as I'm taking one team over, one team under for the Celtics and for the Bucks. Okay. <laughs> and the Bucks are the older team. And I think that could be a problem, yeah, right? Could be. A couple of seasons back, uh, Brooke Lopez was having back problems. He missed a huge chunk of the season. And it was the worst the Bucks have been in the past few years. So if anything similar happens there, I think the Bucks take a step back. If Middleton uh, doesn't return to form two years removed from his hamstring injury, they take a step back there. If Dame Lillard actually has health concerns that weren't just tanking-related health concerns, they don't have a lot of depth uh, on this team. I think that maybe the Bucks are a little bit more volatile this season as they trend a little bit more offense-focused uh, with Dame in for Drew Holiday. So I just can see them using the regular season to figure out how they want to play together uh, in the playoffs, in which case maybe they win 55 games and they come in for the under here. But I still think the Bucs um, are one of the two best teams in the Eastern Conference. I'm just going under uh, from a numbers <laughs> statistics here. The counter to all that, Rob Mahoney I saw wrote for The Ringer, you can quibble with Milwaukee's depth and wonder about how age and injury could hamper the supporting cast. But simply putting Dame and Giannis in the same uniform has seismic potential. A lot of truth to that. Uh, I will reiterate my thoughts on the Bucks. I seriously, seriously believe another Bucks championship depends on Chris Middleton and where he is and whether or not he's tapping into his old all-star form. He's their easy number three scoring weapon. Brings them shooting. 
but he had an injury riddle 22-23. I mean, he averaged 15 points per game. He shot 43%. He only played 33 games. So look, he was banged up. But what type of Middleton are they getting? And yeah, how long does all of this take? And do they care to win 60 wins? Now, I love people in the stream team pointing out, this is Giannis revenge season. Pound the over. Because, and like, I sort of step back and go, that, make, that could make some sense. He played his superstar card. He said, go get me some more talent. Yep. Like, don't mess around here. I'm coming up soon. With when it turns to my contract, everybody's gonna want me. Don't mess around. Go go take a big big swing, and they do. They get Damian Lillard. He had got bounced in the first round, you know, in, in embarrassing fashion. He's banged up, but the the Heat take them out and then roll to the NBA Finals. Like a pissed off Giannis, I really truly could see happening here. And uh, you know, like like we were arguing with Embiid on the Sixers. Oh, that feels like a 50 win team. Sort of the same is true when Giannis is playing. It's like the guy plays so damn hard. That even if they're figuring things out with a new roster and an older roster, eh, it's still probably 55 plus wins, but it's 56 and a half. So, That's right. That's so it could be under at 56, which is probably where I go. I think you're right. You had talked me into it. I, I think they'll they'll just like they've they've won a title before too. They're 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 gonna like. There's no rush to have 65 wins. There's there nothing really the Bucks can prove in the regular season. Right. 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 Will they care at all about racing the Celtics? Racing, I don't know, maybe a Sixers, I don't know, for a number one seed? Probably not. They, they probably won't. They lost the game seven in Boston, right? A couple of seasons back. Yeah, yeah. They'll I mean, probably care a little bit, but they also uh, didn't win championships when they were the first seed in the Eastern Conference. Every time they've been the first seed in the Eastern Conference. They probably don't care that much. Yeah, I'll go just under on the Milwaukee Bucks. All right, we got to take one more break. When we come back, the final division in the Eastern Conference. Our next partner... Pretty cool product. Pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Let's talk Athletic Greens. If you're looking to get better gut health, more energy, or a stronger immune system in a really easy, natural way, you got to check out Athletic Greens. No one listening or watching are fans of having to take a bunch of pills or vitamins in the morning. Nobody. But with Athletic Greens, you can get rid of all those extra vitamin bottles and finally make some room in your cabinet. Athletic Greens is an all-in-one solution that actually tastes good. Real talk here. You're going to enjoy getting your daily vitamins. So what is this stuff? Let me break it down. With one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food, sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, aging, All of the things. All of the things. Don't take my word for it. Athletic Greens has over 7,000 five-star reviews. It's recommended by professional athletes and trusted by many leading health experts. You know who else loves Athletic Greens? Our guy, Tassie. Yes. That's right. I just uh, recently, Nora, dropped him off some more AG1. I guess last week. So he's a big fan of Athletic Greens. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into the flu and cold season. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you got to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash nodunks. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash nodunks take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. You're a big AG guy, or at least your household is. Yes, indeed. And we also love to say AG. All good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> All good. <laughs> okay is dead. AG is in. I like it. All right. The Southeast Division. JD, please. Jimmy Butler making the graphic here. For the Southeast, we got the Hawks. <laughs> 42 and a half Hornets 30 and a half Heat 46 and a half Magic 37 and a half and the Wizards 24 and a half aka this division sort of sucks <laughs> so let's that break it down highest number yeah uh let's start obviously with the Hawks here alphabetical order what do you think Trey Kirby uh they added Patty Mills Wesley Matthews To a solid shooting team. I mean, you got Trey Young, you got Bogdanovich, you got Sadiq Bey. Uh, John Collins finally moved to Utah. So maybe that opens up more minutes, more opportunity for be it Bey or Jalen Johnson or A.J. Griffin or even Okongwu there, their backup center. And they got Kobe Bufkin with their first round pick. 
42 the, and a half. Young boy. Where, where are you going? This is a weird one to me. Uh, 41 and 41 last season. And you go through the ins and the outs of people who are here. But to me, it's basically the biggest in is a full season of Quinn Snyder. He was there half of the year uh, last season. But at, at media day, he mentioned basically had never had a chance to put in an offense. So they were just kind of figuring out on the fly. So I think coming in this season, the offense probably is more cohesive. The defense should be better. Snyder's talking up a big game of if you don't play defense, you're not going to play. Love it. And like you said, the Hawks have a lot of options at their wing and, you know, backup bigs kind of spots that you could cycle through players to get um, somebody who actually is going to play. Personnel-wise, they did lose John Collins. The guy's been starting for a while. He's played every season with Trey Young, so that will be a change. I think their personnel got, like, a tiny little bit worse. So that, to me, just means under. I think they're probably around 40, 41 wins once again. DeAndre Hunter, Sadiq Bey, Jalen Johnson, that kind of is the way they go over uh, this 42-and-a-half line here because all of those guys are very inconsistent, have their flashes. Um, who knows who's actually going to start at the four for this team? I imagine it'll be Bay. If Jalen Johnson pops, maybe he's the guy. Uh, but I'm not necessarily convinced on any of those three. So I think uh, the Hawks can look better this season and just kind of still be in the same spot. It took – until our 11th team here in the Eastern Conference for you and I to really disagree. There we go. I'm pounding the Hawks over. Mm. 42 and a half. Feels too low to me. I think there's a big rebound year with Atlanta. With Trey Young specifically even. Sure. Uh, but I love the idea. I'm, I'm banking on Quinn Snyder with a full camp to implement a system and get these guys playing the right way. I mean, he apparently didn't even try to add anything after he took over last season. Like mid-season, you know, takes over for Nate McMillan, just sort of sees what he has. They make the playoffs. Nothing really happens. Um, I flew up to Boston to watch them get punked by the Celtics in a playoff game. But I really, I, I'm in on this team. I think uh, I think they're actually going to be, when I say drastically better than 42 and a half, like I'm comfortable thinking they're like a 45, 46 win team. I actually have them sort of like getting a little closer to those, those mid-tier teams in the Eastern Conference and sort of, and and I guess the better way to put it is uh, taking a leap forward from our Raptors and our Bulls. Let's put it that way. I don't <laughs> see them sort of hanging around there. I know the line's a little differently, but I, I like this. I like the vets coming in here again. I like all the shooting on this team. I love what I'm hearing. Like, hey, you got to play some defense. I think a Kongwu could have a big breakout season. I'm in. I'm in on the Hawks. Again, 45, 46 wins. I like this one. This will be one of my locks for the over. I'm happy we're, uh, happy we're disagreeing on one here. You think this is a lock? I'm actually I do. kind of surprised by that. Uh, what do you like from Trey Young and DeJounte Murray? I mean, I, I, I like that where they are in the landscape of the NBA, they're completely being overlooked. They're completely being like, oh, you're, you're a one-dimensional player. Uh, that's not going to work with the two of you. I mean, that, they had one year. And they had Nate McMillan as their coach. I'm really, really focusing on Quinn Snyder. That guy gets regular season results. Get to the playoffs, it's a whole different matter, True. as we saw in Utah. But he gets results in, in the regular season, uh, and I think that's what's going to get them to well over a 500 team. That's where I, that's where where I fall. I, I'm high on this, and like I think one of these young guys, be it Jalen Johnson, maybe Griffin, even Bay's not even all that old. Like I like some youth here, some energy with these guys, and I think the I just think the vibe around them is going to be a little better. And you know what helps? Their expectations are. <laughs> like, no one's saying all oh, the Hawks, long. man. They better have home court advantage. Like yep. they're not there now, um, which I think actually helps a weird team like this. And they were like hilarious last year: win one, lose one, win one, lose one. Yeah. Win one. I think uh, a bold prediction. I think the Hawks are gonna have a three game win streak at some point this year. <laughs> all right. So I, I don't know. I like I like Atlanta for like a forty five win season, and that obviously gets them over by a couple, I guess. <laughs> all right, let's keep it going. Charlotte Hornets, thirty and a half wins. They had a dreadful 22-23. And if you remember last year in our season previews, we were saying, pound the under. We hated that line. Yeah, I forget yeah, what it was yeah. off the top of my head, but we were saying, hit the under on Charlotte. There's no way they're hitting that number. And they didn't. Uh, but maybe there's some optimism here. I don't know. Trey, you know, after a brief dip. Two years ago, they were a 43-win team. Uh, most of those pieces are sort of back. LaMelo Ball, obviously, uh, should be playing. Uh, as much as it pains me to say this, I guess Miles Bridges might be back. I mean, he's a 20-point-per-game scorer. Willie, we don't know. He's at practice right now. He's going to miss the first 10 games of the season, but whatever. He is uh, oddly there. you got Brandon Miller, number nope. two pick. Yep. 
uh, in the mix. And Mark Williams, when he was given the keys to sort of be a starter at the end of last year, he looked good. 12 and 10, guy can rebound, block shots. Uh, and, you know, he's a rim running big that you can pair with LaMelo, so it makes some sense. P.J. Washington signed a deal. We love our Chevy Traxxas here. Just, these are just names. These just are names, but are they Mark like... Mark Williams and Nick Richards. Yeah, Those Nick like Richards. De- default names. We made a seven-foot guy. <laughs> <laughs> we made two of them. Gave him the most boring names in the NBA. Mark Williams and Nick Richards. Incredible stuff, but I'm going over here. I just think... So you're going over, see? I'm going over here. The line is too small. 30 and a half. They were 27 and 55 last year, and LaMelo played 36 games. When LaMelo has played in his NBA career, they win at a 38-win pace. Yeah. He plays fast. Teams are not going to be taking the Hornets all that seriously, and they can catch you off guard by playing fast-break basketball uh, the entire time. This is 100% for me a bet on LaMelo being a really good player and the line being so, so low. You mentioned last year a disaster season. LaMelo kept getting hurt by, like, stepping on fans' feet. Yeah. Like, he sprained his ankle multiple times just from courtside fans uh, being around. So... As long as he's able to stay away from a, a couple of ankle injuries and play 70 games, I think the Hornets can at least be in the mix for, you know, 32 to 38 wins, something like that. I also, like, in going through their roster, didn't mention probably two of their top four players, maybe, when they play, Terry Rozier <laughs> uh, yeah. and Gordon Hayward. <laughs> That's how weird this team is. I mean, yeah, Gordon Hayward's <laughs> great still play. there. Yeah. I know he struggles to play, but, yeah. 30 and a half feels low. It's just whether or not it, it really, how much do you put into vibes? Cause you got to admit, I would say the vibes are in the shitter with this team, uh, heading into this season. They would get a one on the vibes. They would get a here, one, but yeah, if LaMelo bla- uh, plays, is it was last year, just that weird dip to get the number two pick. And they ultimately selected Miller, like we said, over scoot. And this is sort of just back to where they are, which feels like, a 30 win team like a you know a low 30 win team and if not more like you said 43 wins two years ago that's that was good that's that was surprising. a good season yes. yes very very surprising but no one wants to bet on this team either on the over that's the thing they're, they're not an I don't want to I don't want to yeah. cheer for a team that's still employing Miles Bridges I'll tell you that <laughs> that's absolutely <laughs> which is why I'm right. pounding the under yeah, 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 <laughs> out, of, yeah. out of spite uh, no but that is low that's a low that's low, a low number. number 30 and a half all right let's go to the heat Miami, 46 and a half, coming off a stunning run, right? From the play into the NBA Finals, they got through the Bucks, they got through the Celtics to get there. And uh, this offseason, hey, it's all set up to land Damian Lillard. Whoops. <laughs> no, they didn't. Instead, they lost Max Struess. He signed with the Cavs, as we talked about. They lost Gabe Vincent. He signed with the Lakers. Uh, they also traded away Victor Oladipo, which I had totally forgotten about. Um they yeah. used their they, yeah. they used their first rounder on Jaime Jaquez Jr., who does look good. I'm a fan of his. Kevin Love was re-signed. And I guess their big addition was Thomas Bryant, who already has a great reaction in preseason when he got dumped <laughs> on by uh, Wemby did the thrunk, and he looked over like, holy crap. So their top five remains the same. It's Butler, Lowry, Tyler Hero's there, Bam, and Caleb Martin. But then, like, their sort of next three you know, minutes eaters, if you want to call that, are all gone. Mm-hmm. So it's a little bit of a different squad here. 46 and a half, though. This is always a tough team to figure out. Because oh, yeah, it's totally. they're two different seasons with the Heat. Regular season and then the playoffs. But what do you think? Yeah, and the way last year played out is really messes with this line, right? 44 wins. And at the end of last season, they were playing their hardest to get out of the play-in tournament. Like, they did not want to be uh, in that 7 through 10 seed, and they could not catch the Brooklyn Nets for whatever reason, and then it turns playoff time, uh, and we all know the story there. They went to the NBA Finals. Incredible stuff, but only 44 wins last season. They're often in that 45-win range. Uh, I don't love the additions uh, that they brought in. Josh Richardson, another guy who's probably going to play. I do wonder if Jaime Jaquez Jr. will be the next JJJ doesn't seem like it, though. Imagine two guys in the NBA with the nickname no, JJJ. No, because he's got a cool name, too. Yeah, yeah, Jaime, yeah. not Jamie. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, Tyler Hero, going to be motivated this season after being traded every single day, basically, for yep. two months. He averaged 20 a game last year. The Heat were 37 and 30 when he played. So as long as he's able to stay on the court, he helps in the regular season. But they don't really care about the regular season. Yeah. They'll peak in the playoffs, as they always do. And the depth, to me... Losing Struess and Vincent definitely hurts because those guys played so much in the playoffs and 
caught fire at yeah. the absolute right times. But you know the Heat are going to find guys who can play at least during the regular season. Like, we saw some good Haywood Highsmith minutes last year uh, during the postseason. He'll probably have a decent season uh, for him this year. Kevin Love had great playoff moments last year. They maybe don't need quite as much from him. And we'll see how Martin does as well. So... I think I'm going under uh, for the Heat, but I also think they're probably the third best team in the Eastern Conference right. when it comes down to actually winning the thing. But this is all about the regular season, so give me an under on the Heat. So what, you think they're going to be like a 44-45 win team? Yeah. That's going to put them, maybe gets them to sixth, but maybe they got to go through the play-in again. They might, yeah. And then nobody's going to want to play them in a first round. Like, nobody's going to want to play that's this what, uh, Maybe that's what uh, the, the Celtics and Bucks will be jockeying for. Not Forget number heat. one seed, just yeah. not playing the Heat. <laughs> Stay out of that side. <laughs> That's exactly right, actually. So it's a, it's potential. Yeah, it's a tough one with them. I mean, the Lowry. I mean, what like, what type of Lowry as your point guard too? Uh, are you getting at his age with his health issues at times and staying staying out there? I know he had some family things that kept him away. I guess that was last season. So hopefully that's off the table. But like, they sort of need. You know, you need. We've seen Jimmy needs some other guys, some yeah. other you know ball handlers at least in a regular season, to help carry the load. And that could be Hero and, of course, should be Lowry. But can he stay? I think you're right. That's good. That's a good line. I like that line. That's a good line. You know, they didn't get – like, they went to the finals and Vegas could have gone crazy and set yeah. that much, much higher. But they, they they know what's going on here. That 46 and a half. Ooh, tight one. All right, here's a fun team. Also in Florida, the Orlando Magic. At 37 and a half, uh, they made a 12-win improvement. Last year, you know, over the prior year, I think that was the best jump in the Eastern Conference. They started five and twenty. Yep. <laughs> and they went on a twenty nine and twenty eight, you know, run if you want to call it that. To close out their schedule, so played five hundred ball. Basically, they were in postseason contention right to the end, uh, till the final couple of games. Couldn't get in the play in. What, what do you think? I feel like this is a team that a lot of people are excited about uh, because of all their their youth, and maybe they blossom even more in Bancaro and Wagner and stuff. But where are you going? Thirty seven and a half. Yeah, this is an exciting team and a fun team to be in on uh, this year. And like you mentioned, they started 5-20. and 20, And that's a part of the reason that people are so hyped about the Magic is that they never gave up in the second half of the season. Yeah, yeah. But also that means they didn't give up in the second half of the season when a lot of other teams did. And that's where they're getting probably some cheap wins that boosted their total uh, compared to a team like uh, like the Dallas Mavericks. They gave up at the end of the season. The Nuggets gave up at the end of the season, right? Like certain teams just shut it down a little bit, get ready for the playoffs yep. or get ready for a draft pick. The Magic did none of that. I don't think they got better this season. They brought in basically a couple of rookies and Joe Ingles <laughs> as an old guy, but they didn't really get worse either losing Bull Bull and Mo Bamba. So maybe they got thicker uh, <laughs> saying goodbye to the skinny guys. I think they're going to be bad on offense. Paolo's a good offensive player. Franz is a very good offensive player. Wendell Carter Jr. can do some stuff, but they don't really have a playmaker. I think their guard rotation is still pretty unsettled, uh, bringing in Anthony Black alongside Fultz, alongside Suggs, alongside Cole Anthony. They just want any of these guys mm -hmm. to be their point guard of the future. I don't necessarily know if that player is going to show up this season. So I think the offense is going to be a struggle. Defense, they could be a little bit better. They've got really good size uh, in Carter, in Paolo, in Franz, Jonathan Isaac. We'll see what he can actually give them. But they've got some good positional size, which bodes well for their defense. But I think there's too many questions offensively for them to take another step forward like they did last year. So I'm barely under on this one. I think they'll probably be a better team, but it might not necessarily show in the win total. But if you look at it over the course of two seasons and you're like, oh, you're plus 15 wins in two years, that's right. incredible. Uh, but maybe a lot of it was backloaded last year. Look, what's what's fun about that, it got overlooked because no one's really caring about the Orlando Magic as the season went on, especially after a 5-20 and 20 start. Markel Fultz did start to turn into an actually solid basketball player, good. point guard. Very, yep. very, yeah, very good. He's getting better. You're hoping he even continues to evolve. I mean, obviously, the start of his career... That was garbage. That was not. That was a rough start. But he's turning into a really good player. I like that they have continuity here. You know, they are a young team, so maybe you're you're hoping that they're going to be healthy. I do love that they have so many guys that it feels like you're going to have to earn a spot. Yeah. In the rotation, that can sometimes lead to success. You know, they, you're battling it out at some positions because, like, the starting unit is probably Markel Fultz. I, I think Gary Harris probably still starts at the two for them. Franz Wagner, Paolo, and then Wendell Carter Jr. And then you said it, a lot of these guys, Cole Anthony, Jalen Suggs, Jonathan Isaac, Joe Ingles is there. 
Anthony Black and Jed Howard, their two picks, and then Mo Wagner. They got two Wagners on the team. Um, I, I like that they're that that could breed some competition there, and you got to earn these minutes. Um, but yeah, it's an, it's another it's another sort of like improvement on a huge improvement from the year before. But I think that's why people are talking themselves in. A lot of people are thinking the Magic are going to be one of these teams that are like they're in the play in. Especially if you have the Raptors or Bulls, yeah. both if not one of them falling out, and I think that makes sense. I yeah, can yeah, see yeah, yeah. see why that's that's the case. You know, the Nets they're probably around there too, as we talked about off the top of the show. But thirty-seven and a half, good line, good line. I think I lean just under. Man, I'm torn between the Magic and the Pacers as the team that have mm. similar lines mm. here. That's gonna like exceed the expectations by three or four games because I think one of them will. I just don't know which one. <laughs> Oh, that's Pacers for me. Okay. Uh, that's a guards league, and they got a good guard. But, man, I didn't realize that the Magic have five guys from the University of Michigan on their team. That's ridiculous. Wow. And you love you love blue. Go blue. <laughs> yeah, so I've seen all of their guys play in college, but it's like their decision maker a Wolverine? Yeah, didn't know that. Is it Ben Golliver making the picks? <laughs> yeah, he must be high on the that's Magic. Crazy. Uh, final team here in the Eastern Conference, Washington Wizards, 24 and a half. Uh, the Beal and Porzingis trades... Got them back. Jordan Poole, Patrick Baldwin Jr., Tyus Jones, Danilo Gallinari, Mike Muscala, Ryan Hollins, Landry Shamit, a protected first-round pick. Ryan Four Hollins? Four pick swaps with Phoenix and eight second-rounders. Ryan Rollins. <laughs> Ryan Not <laughs> Hollins. Did I say Hollins? I don't know. Uh, I don't I, think it matters. I plaid or I pad? I plaid. <laughs> Ryan Hollins and Ryan Rollins. Uh, they also selected Bilal Koulibaly, uh, yep. the athletic wing from France with their number seven pick. Uh, surprised some people. 24 and a half. One of the lowest numbers, if not the lowest number, uh, we've got here in the Eastern Conference. It is. Yep. Is it too high? Is it too low? What? That number is too low. Washington Wizards, easy over, I do believe. Whoa! All, they have NBA players throughout their entire rotation. Like, basically all their guys in the top seven would be the seventh man on another team, if not better than that. Like, Poole, just overtaxed, uh, uh, and the scapegoat of the Golden State Warriors. Tyus Jones, a really good backup point guard. Now maybe a good starting point guard. Kyle Kuzma, he keep play on teams that are trying to win as well. I think that this line is so low because people are assuming that the Wizards will probably make some trades at some point. Kuzma will no doubt be in trade deadline talks once he's eligible once again. But right now, I think they just have too many decent NBA players just like the Pacers last year. I was over on the Pacers last year just because it was like, if they don't trade their guys, they're going to win games because they got decent guys. That's the case this year, so I think they could win 29 games, go over pretty easily, but this isn't over for me. I like Schumann's point here I saw in one of his articles on this team. If the Wizards can come together in the style of last year's Utah Jazz, who also traded away totally. their two best yeah. players, then they could compete for a play-in spot. Unlikely, even Shu points out. But who cares about that? Could they win 25 games or more? That's all we're debating mm-hmm. here. Uh, you know, I can see why that makes sense. You know, you, like you finally move off of Beal. You know, Porzingis obviously is a good player. He's going to look a lot better with the Boston Celtics than yep. he ever sort of looked with the Wizards as like their go-to big or obviously second best player. 24 and a half feels low. But you wonder, like, it's going to, it feels like it could be a hilarious team, too. This is With Poole and Kuzma, oh, like, yeah. <laughs> fighting for the ball like Carlton and Will Smith. I mean, that could be funny. Uh, they could e- easily have, like, a full season compilation of Shaq and a Fool at the end right, of the year. Right, right, right. Yeah, taking us back to some old Wizards teams <laughs> when they had some characters. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. But man, 24 and a half, it's, it's very it's a low. low number. It's a very low number for a team that, yeah, I know it's different, but won 35 games. Man, I look at all these lines and I'm always like, over, over, over. I'm like, I want to convince myself every one of them is disrespectful. But at the end of the day, first off, some are going to be under and there's going to be some shitty teams. Yep. <laughs> there's going to be some 20-win teams. There's got to be one or two. Uh, there's so be. who is it out of out of the the Wizards and, and your Pistons and you know your your magic maybe our teams like who knows there's gonna be some garbage teams in the wiz in the east and you just got to figure out who they are all right so that's the wizards i would probably lean i'm gonna lean that they are gonna be one of those teams so i guess i'll lean under but it won't be a lock uh let's wrap up this pod with our locks though you want to go back and forth you want to go one two three what are trey kirby's locks for the eastern conference over under win totals i'll give you my two biggest locks okay i'll start with that because the third lock uh 
I'm a little nervous on my third lock. I'm not totally uh, locked in on it, but I'm locked in on Cleveland going over 50 and a half wins. They had 51 wins last season. I think they got better. Um, okay. And they've got a chip on their shoulder after getting punked by the Knicks in the playoffs. So give me Cleveland over 50 and a half. I think they finished third in the Eastern Conference regular season. My other lock, Detroit Pistons under 28 and a half. I just think that that's too many wins to add. I don't think that they were as bad as a 17-win team last season, but I also don't think they're going to add 12 wins just by bringing in a new coach, a new rookie, and getting Cade Cunningham back for an entire season. Um, so, yeah, those are my those are my two lockiest locks. Okay, so Cavs over. Cavs over, Pistons under. Okay, I'll give you my two locks. I got one that I'm guaranteed. It's the Hawks. Ka-ka! I went through it already. I love that over. 42 and a half. I, I feel like they're going to be a 45, 46 win team. I'm going to go with a lock, the Milwaukee Bucks under. Okay. After thinking about it now, Giannis, like the revenge season, yes, but that's playoff time, baby. That's not regular season. He's not He's not dumb. Um, and they're going to be good. They can still win 55 games and still be the under. Uh, so I, I'm i going to go Milwaukee as my under. I think it's... Nice. It's, uh, it's, I know it's weird because, of course, they're going to be one of the teams in championship contention, but... We've seen like the Nuggets do this many times, you know, uh, not not racking up sixty win seasons by any means. So I'll go under, and then we get to our third and final lock. And you're you're are you still searching for it? Nah, you're not anymore. Okay. I was considering uh, locking in Milwaukee as an under as well, but since you took that one, I'll go with my other potential choice: Milwaukee, Miami Heat under forty six and a half wow. wins. Wow, wow, and it's not dissimilar to taking the under on the Bucks, I think these will be two of the three best teams in the Eastern Conference when it really comes down to games that matter. Uh, but for the regular season, I just don't think Miami cares all that much. They'll care enough to get into the sixth seed this season rather mm. than be seventh or eighth. My final lock, I'm surprising myself here a little bit. I'm going to go Knicks. I'm going Knicks. I'm leaning, I like. Uh, I needed to hear that stat about how, how uh, they struggled out of the gate last year. I like that. Yeah. And, you know, Josh Hart then comes in later. That yeah, completely yeah, yeah. got them going. He's out there at the start of the season. DiVincenzo, as we said, you know, just another another guy. Great vibes. They all know each other. Um, 45 and a half. I mean, it's a good line. But I just don't – why are they falling off? I, I'm, I'm struggling to like – like Brunson – is the type of player that's going to just, like, if he's playing. I mean, you know, injury comes into play with all these. But, like, yeah. that guy's out there. He's damn good. And you're just going to be a really solid team. He's, I mean, I made this comparison years ago. He's Van Vliet-like in that sense. He's just a really damn good point guard, and your team is going to be above average. So I'll go the Knicks, 45 and a half nice. over. All right. So just to recap, you have the Cavs over 50 and a half. You got the Pistons under 28 and a half. And ultimately, you're going under on the Miami Heat. That's right. At 46 and a half. And my three locks, I am going over 42 and a half for the Atlanta Hawks. I am going under for the Milwaukee Bucks, just under there, 56 and a half. And I'm going over for New York City, 45 and a half. Let's hear from you. Who are your locks? Let us know in the stream team, as you already are. Let us know in the YouTube comments. Tweet at us at No Dunk Sink. Let's call it there. Let's call it there. Let's regroup. Let's get ready for the Western Conference tomorrow. That's right. We're daily. Once again, season five of No Dunks. Join us live at 10 a.m. Eastern on YouTube. Smash the like button. Hit the subscribe. Hit that little bell notification thing so you know when the boys are going live. Bell. Uh, and we'll do the Western Conference tomorrow. I'm excited about this one as we go through all 15 teams, look at their over-unders, and debate. Ooh, under, over, and then lock a few in. Guys, thanks so much for joining us live here. TK, great work. Great work to you. We got another 250 shows to go. <laughs> Should I have said that out loud? Probably not. JD just started crying. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, go check out Is This Good with Fred Katz. And uh, we will see you tomorrow. Until then, Clip of Rose. Here first. Have a great time. Turn up. Love you guys. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. And remember, I thought a, like, I thought a quote would come to me. I just thought it would come in the middle of the show. I'd have a great thing to say, but uh, as I like to say when I don't have a quote, thanks for joining us, and remember that we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> no, we can't end the first show like that. I had a dream last night that Rihanna came on No Dunks. 
like popped in out of nowhere. Nobody had any idea. She sat down. She seemed to be a fan of the show, but I couldn't quite tell. Okay. And then we, I tried to talk basketball with her, like we all did. She didn't really want to. And then we wrapped up the segment with her singing Gone Till November. And we chimed in the Wyclef Jean song. And she was surprised that we knew the lyrics. And then I woke up. <laughs> January, February, March, April. <laughs> it's exactly the lyrics I said. She was like, the best lyrics. Yeah, she got really excited. That's a great album. The the Carnival, I guess. Was that what it was? His his album? Is that what it's called? I think it's called I think that. you're right. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's good. All right. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Embrace the day, people.